Salam and Seba El Care everyone from another hot, dusty and beautiful day outside of Baghdad, Iraq. Today we are starting our day about one hour west of Baghdad at an ancient site called Dur Karigalzu. Um, this is an ancient temple apparently they used to worship the moon. It was built by the king of Babylon in the 14th century and it was part of an ancient city of Mesopotamia. Probably saying that all wrong. Mesopotamia? I think that's correct. Um, and all that remains now of that ancient city is this one last remaining ziggurat, ziggurat temple and a few little remains of the temples around it. It's a pretty amazing site to visit obviously it's so old so beautiful and still pretty well maintained to be honest. Okay so the name of this temple is Dur Karigalzu and Dur translates to fortress of and Karigalzu translates to a herder of the people which was sort of a translation from the name of the king or the king's family from that time. So they kind of think that this temple might have been called if you were to translate it into English um, the fortress of the herder of the people or the fortress of the king's people. And you can really start to see it clear now behind me. Um, it is absolutely huge like this this date tree, palm tree, um, is pretty tall and this structure is at least two times as tall. You'll see now when we get a bit closer. For me, it's so important to bring you guys to places like this and show you places like this because a lot of people have these, you know, preconceived perceptions or views about Iraq and what it probably looks like and of course some of that is here but it's also one of the most like historically important destinations in the whole world and has these incredible historical monuments that you can come and visit it's super peaceful in this area you know it's quite green as the guys were saying it reminds me a little bit of some of the places you visit in um, Egypt oh my god we're so high yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> wow <laughs> This is crazy. Slightly scary. Be careful. So Doug's doing a bit of research there online and he's telling me from what he's read, don't want to get anyone in trouble here, um, that they're saying that some of the designs, I guess you could say, in the way they are stepped um, of the pyramids in Egypt, some of them, um, the older ones, may have gotten their inspiration from these old cigarettes here in Iraq and other places, maybe in the Middle East. So that's pretty interesting. Egyptians, don't come at me. I'm just reading what I've heard. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Look at that hole! Can you guys see that up there? And I think that's where all the birds are flying out of just now. Wow, and then you can see some brick here that looks almost kind of new. And then the older levels. They said this was built by, um, they would do seven layers of brick and then one layer of sort of wet reed, like reed that's been kind of tied together. And that helped to kind of cement the bricks together and to keep it all in place. I think maybe that's what they were saying about the Egyptians using the same method as well, about the seven layers of brick and then one layer of reed. But who knows? Um, so we're currently just checking out the temple area and a lot of this has been rebuilt so you can see that it's really new bricks compared to cigarette which is way over there behind us which is still the old original bricks but um, it's still pretty cool to see the designs and how it looked. We're just using a bit of tissue to sort of clean the inscriptions on the ground to see what they say. It's an, an old way of written cuneiform. Yeah, the armor. You are going to have to excuse my redness. That's probably what I'm going to look like for the rest of the trip. But I just want to give you guys a little bit, bit of an explanation about these temples. So obviously the ziggurat is the main temple and then these temples might have been built for the wives of the gods. Guys, yeah. look at my face. <laughs> I'm looking like a lobster. Um, it is so hot outside. Um, we are all just disgusting. It's just almost indes indescribably hot. So we're heading back to the hotel now just to have a little bit of a break, maybe a cold shower, change our clothes, and then we'll go out and explore a bit more of Baghdad. But yeah, right now we just, just need to cool down a little bit. All 
Our next stop today is a monument here in Baghdad called Save Iraqi Culture. Um, it is a pretty unique, pretty cool monument statue. And it is a, kind of looks like a man with many heads, but the heads are actually extra arms. So it's five arms holding up this falling pillar, which I guess represents the, the pillar of Iraqi culture, whether it's um, artifacts and manuscripts and everything else that sadly a lot of stuff has been ruined or taken or stolen or looted, uh, whether it be by Iraqi people or by other people coming into Iraq over the years. And so much of Iraqi culture um, sadly is now gone um, and they need to do more to preserve Iraqi culture. So this is just a monument to sort of say, like, this is what we need to do. We need to stand up. It's not going to take one person. As you can see, five different arms. It's going to take a lot of people to preserve Iraqi culture and to save it. Woo! So guys, after a pretty intense uh, morning of sightseeing, we've just come here for lunch. There's so much food on the table. I will try and describe it all to you, but I'm not even quite sure what it is. But we're starting with some sort of soup that has um, some sort of Iraqi lemon inside. But for lunch today, we're having Kuba al Baghdadi. That's the name of this, this restaurant, al Baghdadi. We're right to eat a giant meatball, which kind of looks like bakso, like the way you would get bakso soup in Indonesia. Um, and apparently that you can get this soup and pour it over the back so well. It's got groats on the outside, some sort of grain, and then meat on the inside, which I'll show you once I cut it open. And we've also got lots of amazing bread. As always in Iraq, they always give you a massive basket of bread. What's your favorite thing on the table? The soup. The soup, okay. The bread here in Iraq is amazing. Every time you sit down, they always give you this massive basket of bread. And it's super hot, super fresh. Just like tear it open. Like my assistant Jay is showing you. <laughs> this bread is some of the best I've had. It's so good. One of the best? Yeah. Okay, so obviously the bread was amazing in the restaurant we just ate and one of the guys that works there told us that they have their entire own bread factory next door. So they said we could just walk in and check out the bread factory. Look how fast he's doing the bread, it's so cool. I'm going to end today's vlog here, but be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified for more Iraqi travel vlogs coming in the near future.